Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have more of an application type problem where we're trying to find the acceleration of the system. Now it turns out in order to do that we have to find the direction and magnitude of all the friction forces acting on these two objects M1 and M2 just like we did in the previous video. So let's begin with that first. Let's establish all the forces on the system and then eventually we'll find the acceleration of the system as well as the tension in the string right here. Along the way we'll have to find all the friction forces on M1 and all the friction forces on M2. Well just like before we have the weight M1 pulling down in this direction M1 uh, times the acceleration due to gravity and we have M2 pulling down this way so we have M2 times G or I should say the acceleration due to gravity or the force of gravity pulling down on M2. Now we have a normal force pushing back from the surface here but notice that it's pushing back against the weight of both M1 and M2 so we have a normal force let's call this normal force 1 which is the sum of M1G plus M2G and of course it's the magnitude of those two the directions in the opposite direction of both M1G and M2G. In between the two surfaces here we have a normal force pushing back let's call that N2 and that is simply the force pushing back against M2 so this would be M2G or the weight of M2 I should say. Alright so now we have the two normal forces we have M1G we have M2G now the friction forces. Well, first of all if I'm looking at M1 and if there was no friction at all M1 would accelerate to the right which means that if there's a friction force between M1 and the surface it would have to be acting in the opposite direction. I'm looking for my purple pen here so that means we have a force friction here force friction 1 which is equal to the normal force times mu the normal force is N1 and mu would be mu1 so in this case force friction 1 is equal to N1 which is going to be M1G plus M2G all divided by mu sub 1. There we go. What about between M1 and M2? There also will be a friction force relative to M1. Again M1 will be accelerating to the right which means that the friction force will be acting to the left. So we have a second friction force acting on M1 let's call it force friction 2 and it's going to be caused by the normal force caused by M2 and the coefficient of friction between the two surfaces. So force friction 2 is equal to N2 times mu2 which is equal to M2G mu sub 2. And those are both of the friction forces acting on M1 so if we want to answer this question right here this is equal to force friction 1 plus force friction 2 which is the sum of these two forces right here. What about the friction force on M2? Notice M2 will be accelerating in this direction. If there's no friction, no question about it, M1 will be accelerating this way, M2 will be accelerating this way. So the friction force acting on M2 is going to be in the opposite direction. That means there's going to be a third friction force, this one right here, force friction 3 which is going to be equal to the normal force and 2 times mu sub 2 which means it's going to have the exact same magnitude as force friction 2. So force friction 3 is going to be equal to N2 which is M2G times mu sub 2. It's just the same magnitude opposite in direction. And so on here we can say that this is going to be equal to force friction 3. Now for the acceleration. We have now found all the friction forces acting on the system. Now be careful here since we're going to calculate the acceleration of the whole system we now have to think about the friction forces as either aiding or opposing the acceleration. And that makes it easier to figure out how to put the sign in the equation. Now here we can write that the acceleration is going to be equal to the net force divided by the total mass and the net force is going to be all the forces aiding the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration divided by the total mass of the system which is M1 plus M2. 
Now remember that M2 is going to accelerate this way and M1 is going to accelerate this way so that we understand the direction of the acceleration of the whole system. The forces aiding the acceleration. Well, it's, if you look at M1, we have a force pulling this way and the two friction forces in the opposite direction of the acceleration, so therefore they're opposing. And looking at M2, we have only one force acting on it, which is the friction force, which is in the opposite direction to the acceleration. So all three friction forces oppose the acceleration. Only one force, F, aids acceleration. So this becomes F minus force friction 1, which is M1G plus M2G times mu1 minus force friction 2, M2G times mu2 minus force friction 3, which is M2G mu sub 2, and the whole thing divided by the sum of the two masses, M1 plus M2. Now we can go ahead and plug in all the values that we have. We're given the, the force 100 newtons, so this is equal to 100 minus M1g, M1 is 5 kilograms, that's 5 times 9.8 plus M2, which is 3 times 9.8, and the sum of those two are multiplied by mu sub 1, which is 0 0.2, minus M sub 2, which is, where are we, M sub 2, which is 3 kilograms, times 9.8, times mu sub 2, which is 0 0.3. And again, here we have it again, duplicate, so 3 times 9.8 times 0 0.3, and the whole thing divided by the total mass, 5 plus 3. There we go. There's our entire equation that will give us the acceleration. Now, it sometimes helps to show the individual results of all these. So let's go ahead and write this down. So we have acceleration is equal to 100 minus the first friction force. That's 49 plus the quantity 3 times 9.8. That's 78.4. And then take the whole thing, times 0.2 equals, that's minus 15.68. So put a minus in front of that. Now, we're going to subtract from that, minus the quantity, 3 times 9.8 times 0.3, and that's minus 8.82. And then again, minus 8.82. And take the whole thing and divide it by 8. And the result is that we have an acceleration of 8.3 meters per second squared, rounded off to two, two digits. So again, going back, you have to establish the force of each surface or the friction force between each of the surfaces. We have one here, we have one here acting on M1, and we have a second one here acting on M2. We have to establish the direction of the acceleration and the direction of the friction forces relative to the acceleration, and typically the friction force will always be in the opposite direction. When we then calculate the acceleration, we find the net force by adding all the forces that aid acceleration and subtract from that all the forces that oppose the acceleration. Only one force aids, and then the three friction forces oppose the acceleration. And that's how it's done.